All right, it is about time we formally learn about scope. Scope, in its simplest form, is the variables that you currently have access to. That's all it is. So by variables, in this sense, what I mean is uh, variables, functions, objects, arrays, really anything that you have access to is within your scope. And with JavaScript, your functions have scope too, which means when you declare a variable inside of a function, it's considered a local variable. Now, there is a big if statement around that. And that if statement really is how you declare the variable. Now, we have two types of variables that we typically deal with. We have local variables and global variables. So when we say local variable, we're talking about inside of a function and global variable means a variable that's accessible outside of the function uh, and that can move inside of the function. So let's start with the global. Global variable is equal to, we'll just put the year 2017. And function test console.log global variable. And we run that function. And in our browser, here we see 2017. So this is a global variable because this variable was declared outside of this function. Now, what happens if we say variable, local variable is equal to, let's say next year, 2018. No, that's not far enough in the future. Let's say 2028. And outside of the function, we write console.log local variable. Save. We get a reference error. Local variable is not defined. Now, what does that mean? That means local variable is only accessible inside of test. Now, that's because we use the var declaration. When we use var, that, that is giving a local scope. Now, why is this global? Because currently, this entire page is the local scope. And inside of this local scoped page is a local scoped function. And inside of that can be an anonymous function. Have you ever seen the movie Inception? It's like that. How far down does a rabbit hole go? Well, technically not that far, really. Now, what happens if we get rid of var? And we just declare this as a global variable, because without var, this is global. Same thing happens. Now, what you want to prevent is too many global variables. Variables are best off actually scoped. And I know this might sound a little counterintuitive. When you can control the variables where they are, you're talking about a more secure, often a more efficient application. So just because you can make everything global does not mean that you should make everything global. And in fact, in here, I'm going to go ahead and put that var back in there. When a variable is considered local, I'm doing air quotes here, local, the local variable, let's say inside of a function, it only ever lives for as long as that function is running. So when I call test on line 10, from here to here is where local variable exists. Once this function is done running, it no longer exists. Now that's what a local variable is. What makes this a global variable is just that it's local, again, air quotes, local scope is larger than the function. And so that this variable is going to live for as long as JavaScript is running on the page. Now, when we talk about parameters or arguments inside of a function, remember we had, you know, num1 to num4 when we were building a calculator, uh, things like that. These are automatically local. So this is the same thing as saying var num3. And these will only ever live inside of the function for as long as the function is running. Once the function is not running, these no longer are declared or assigned anything and it starts over. So when you run this function again, it automatically starts over. Now we know how to break out of that because of the this keyword. And you can store the this keyword with additional properties to a function. Now jumping back to global variables, when we have a variable out here like this, this belongs to the window object. This is the same as saying window.global variable is equal to because JavaScript binds to your page and your window you are now creating a global variable. So this is technically the most global variable that you can create. So let's create an example of a global variable. So we have global counter is equal to zero, 
function add and all we're going to do is global counter plus plus and when we type add over and over and over again and at the end we console log global counter well this is going to increment by one and and starting at zero so this will be one two three four five so on now going back to our code refresh the page we get the number seven so why is it we can use a global variable inside of a function but we can't use a local variable outside of a function well ladies and gentlemen in javascript that is called closure now what makes closure a very beautiful thing is that you don't have to pass all your variables through your functions now if if you write any python or php to the exception of global variables uh, usually that comes in the form of request or or like when a form is submitted the post object but any variables that you write typically are not global but in javascript they can be now with great power comes great responsibility make sure you don't overdo it but what makes this really nice is with global counter we don't have to add global counter to our parameters we don't have to add this dot global counter plus plus like we did in previous examples we don't have to do any of that it does it for us now additionally we can also create another variable inside of this function called local counter and we can do whatever we want with this remember this is hoisted so this is essentially moving to the top anyway so declare it at the top best practice and we can do whatever we want with local counter now local counter will only live for as long as this function runs and it will live several times it will live and die with add it will live and die with this add it will live and die with this add it will live and die with this add so on and so on now this whole process is called closure and closure is allowing globally scoped variables inside of essentially functions or anything else that has a smaller scope so now with our scope we have global scope we have local scope and we have closure now if all of that was a teeny bit confusing i'm going to create just one more example one super quick one and it's not even going to be real code it's going to be pseudo code right so we have variable one and this baby is global then we have a function and anything that we start with var in here is local now variable one can automatically get passed into I make a little arrow here be awesome if I could yeah just like that so variable one is automatically passed into the name function so we can access this inside of here but we cannot access any local variables variables that start with var from inside the function outside of the function it just doesn't work so that gives functions a little bit extra privacy while giving them the advantage to reach out beyond their own world and grab anything that was assigned before them. Now, your assignment, I hope you're ready for this one because this one's going to be a doozy. Your assignment for this course is to do absolutely nothing. All I want you to do is observe what has happened here. And next time you're looking at some sort of JavaScript, I want you to think to yourself, is this variable local? Or is this global? Why is it global? Why is it local? Just, that's all you have to do. Just think to yourself. Half of the battle with programming and web development is really just thinking and debating and figuring out how it works inside of our heads. So that is scope. If it didn't make sense to you now, don't sweat it too much. You will get a hang of it. I know you will.